hi everyone this is Ahmed welcome to the power tutorials in today's video we are going to learn how can we make our drop downs look more interesting so normal drop downs look like this in today's video we are going to learn how can we make them look like this instead so let's get started welcome back everyone here we are in the power apps studio today we are going to be converting this drop down into a drop down with images so that it looks more interesting uh, to set that up first thing is that we are going to need a table that contains images so that we can add that to this drop down so let's head to our SharePoint a site and create a list that would contain that data let's just create a blank list give it a name as per your requirement and hit create now this would create a list a blank list with just one column title you can add more columns as per your requirement for now i'll just add two more columns just two more columns so one is for the price of the item that would be a number column and another column for the unit of the item that would be a single line of text and save that let's just add some data in here so this data is for fruits with the price and the unit and we are going to attach the image that we would like to reflect in that drop down so i have some images here that i'm going to be adding so for apple let's just add apple and save i'll add just some more data here So that is done i have added some data here every row has an attachment the image that we would be reflecting in our drop down so let's just copy this link of this list go to your power app and add this source as sharepoint in your app added now add a combo box a blank combo box we don't need any uh, items we would not be adding any items in here just put it leave it blank we don't want multi select or allow searching on let's, let's just turn them off for now now on the on select property of this combo box we would set up a variable so let's say set show drop down equals to not show drop down so that would just keep on flipping this the value of this variable from true to false false to true every time you click on this okay now we are going to insert a gallery and the data source for this gallery is going to be uh, the SharePoint list with the images, which is this one drop down with images. We'll just select the source. We have our table here. Adjust the size of your gallery according to your app. So we will make the width of this gallery equal to the width of the drop down here okay and now link the visible property of this gallery to the variable that we created show drop down so if that is true the gal gallery is going to be visible if it is not then the gallery would not be visible so once we click on this we see the gallery would come up okay now but the image is not visible so let's select this uh, image control and go to the image property of this control and here what we will do is we will pull the first attachment of this particular item so we will type first this item dot attachments dot absolute uri that would bring up the image that we attach this so it's starting to take shape as you can see 
let's just set up this gallery you can set this gallery up according to what you need so this separator let's not just make it a separator we'll convert this into the background and we say send it to back to the very back so everything is visible on top of it this is it we have this rectangle here let's just delete that one we don't need that we also don't need this icon let's delete that so it's totally up to us we can set the gallery up as we like and that would become our drop down now we need to set up the functionality that once we select it that item should be added to our drop down okay so to do that let's just see what is the on select property of all of these items that should be select parent by default so you can see on select of this is select parent and on select of all of the items should be the same select parent right now select the whole gallery and on the on select property of this gallery we would set up something we would say collect selected product so just give create a collection we would be creating a collection we can give it any name we would like so let's and here we are going to collect this item whatever we have clicked on would be collected in this particular collection so before collecting we would also check if it is already there then we are going to remove it so remove if this id is equals to this item dot id so first it, if it is already there then it's going to remove that and then get added so that would make sure that no nothing is added twice okay so once that is set up other than that on select of this we would also set the value of our variable that is linked to the visible property of this gallery to false so we will say set show drop down to false so that once we click on it the drop down goes away right so now let's just click on it and this goes away like that but still we don't see anything in the drop down so we are clicking on it we are capturing the value in that collection but that those values that we have selected are not visible here in our drop down so to make that visible we would have to set up another gallery so let's just click on insert and insert a blank vertical gallery here okay and the source of this gallery is going to be the collection that we just set up which is selected products okay now let's just insert a label in here text label okay to the very beginning and the text property of this is going to be this item dot product sorry this item dot title yeah that is the name let's set this up to bold you can set up the colors as you would like sit we can set up the width of the gallery like this but now you can see we have selected four products this is not uh, really looking like a drop down right now right so to make it look like a drop down like these items are selected we would have to redesign our gallery a little bit let's just fill some color first in this label so we select this label fill in some color here let's say this one and let's say the font the color property is going to be this a lighter color and 
let's insert an icon let's say if we have selected something and we'd like to remove it we need to be able to do that so we'll insert a cancel icon which is this one here set up the size change the color property to a lighter color so is it it is visible properly let's reduce the height a little bit more and let's align these to the middle of each other now we need these items to be reflecting in here in inside the drop down so for that we would have to set up the width property and the wrap property of this gallery dynamically okay so select this label and the width property of this label set it to parent dot width divided by count rows of selected products that is the uh, the collection that we, cre we created which contains these selected products so that would be the width of this let's set the wrap property of this label to false switch it off now it will always remain in one line you can set up the size of the text according to what you need another thing is this the, this cancel button icon should always stay with this label at the end of this label so we will set up the X property of this as we link it to this label label 5 yes. so the X property would be label 5 dot X plus label 5 dot with minus self dot with so that will make sure that this icon is always at the edge of this label let's just add up some uh, padding to the right of this label let's say maybe 30 okay we have this set up but still uh, these items are reflecting on top of each other while they should fit in here in this space in inside this drop down so we would have to set up the wrap property of this gallery so select the gallery go to the wrap count property and type in function so wrap count is going to be count rows and our collection that is selected products so that everything always comes in one row okay so you can see now it is there set this gallery up like this okay so the cancel button is there but once we click on it nothing is happening because we need to set that up so on the on select property of this icon select this icon on the on select property we will say remove selected products this item so from the selected products remove this item so now we can click on this and we would be able to move this we'll uh, work on that error later so let's see once we click on this the drop down appears click back the drop down disappears we can select any of the product it gets selected and the drop down disappears you can select another product we can see it getting added what we wanted there's just one more thing that there is no separation between these items everything is looking a bit mixed up that is because we are using the full parent dot width in order to uh, get the width of this label so let's just select this gallery select this label and instead of using the full parent dot width we are we are going to say use parent dot width 
minus sum so leave some space some of that width for the blanks so let's say parent dot width minus 20 is what we are going to use that should bring up some space in between these items like this see now we can see all the items separately and in order to remove them we can click on any of these items and they would get removed that is working now let's work on this error that we are getting at the top that is because if nothing is selected we are dividing width of the gallery by zero so that's why we are getting that error so that error is in the width property of this label so here we will say if if this is greater than zero if this means count rows selected products if this is greater than zero in that case use this otherwise don't divide it by anything just give me parent dot width that's it and close the bracket so in case uh, we have something in the selected products means that is not count rows of this is not zero in that case uh, divide the parent dot with minus 20 by the count the, the number of rows there are in this uh, in this collection otherwise just uh, the whole width of the gallery should be given to this particular label so now when we delete that we should not get that error so you see if nothing is selected we are not getting that error anymore and we can keep on getting them selected like this we are almost done other than that any item that is selected we need to highlight that so let's just select this particular uh, separator that is a rectangle uh, in the back and we will go to the fill property of this item so this is white in case it is not selected let's just say so if this item dot id is in selected selected products dot id then if it is there then give it a color let's say light blue otherwise give it make it white so if this is selected it's going to get blue otherwise it is going to remain white see now if I select this this is going to show that this is selected if I deselect this it will change to white so now how do we use this data that is selected because in the drop down we have the property dot selected items that we can use uh, but how do we do it here here instead of using dot selected items we have this uh, collection that we created selected products so all the data that is selected is here in the selected products uh, collection and this collection is what we are going to be using uh, as for you know for patching into our list or whatever our requirement is uh, in that particular application so there we have it guys we have successfully created the drop down with the images field in it as promised if you think this video has helped you please give it a thumbs up if you like me to cover something else please leave a comment below i'll try my best to do that for you if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video thank you for watching guys see you in the next one